Hello, and thank you for taking a few moments out of your busy day to listen to me uh, talk about what conception is. I think it's an important topic, at least the way I perceive it. Um, I think that the art and science of how to conceive is something that is uh, taken for granted. And um, after being in this industry of DNA relationship testing for 14 years, I have um, seen a lot. And um, it has changed my perspective on how men and women actually engage well, I should say, it, well, it's changed my uh, it changed my perspective on how to interact with women. It has changed my perspective on how I've looked at um, relationships and the idea of sexual intercourse. Um, these things uh, have been kind of a mind blow as you start going over or being in an industry for a long time and you start learning different aspects of things that you didn't know when growing up. You know what I mean? Like, for example, um, I was made to believe that uh, all fathers do not really want to be in the home with their children or they don't care about their children based on a lot of the narrative. And that's not to say that there's not a lot of men who are out there like that, but it's a marketing campaign that has said, well, certain demographics of men in particular are more likely not to be around their children uh, or don't want to be in their children's lives. And that's not necessarily what I've seen over these last 14 years. Actually, I've seen quite the opposite. I see a lot of men who want to, but due to circumstance and um, men uh, 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 who are being denied access to the children and children being leveraged as pawns in the game. Now, I want to be clear. I'm talking about a specific aspect of men who do want to be involved in their, ch- in, their, in their child's life here. Um, There are men who just don't, and I've seen quite a few of those as well, too. But I've seen more who do want to be and try their best to fight. But due to whatever relationship they have with the mother of the child um, and her reasoning behind doing what she's doing, um, the narratives, from my perspective, help me to understand what relationships are are in this country at this particular point in time. And it's from this scrutinization um, of what a relationship is where it got me to thinking about conception and producing greatness. Um, I don't think that's ever been taught to my knowledge, at least not in uh, in a public uh, forum where people really scrutinize the the fine art and science of conception. Now, I want people to really think about what I'm saying here. Um, Oftentimes, when I have conversations, people think that when I say uh, your child is an idea, they get thrown off. Like, what do you mean an idea? And um, what I basically mean is this. The term conception, which is used for childbirth or you conceive the child, a concept is an idea. So just on the term alone, conception, we're going to have to recognize we're creating ideas. And the importance of understanding what an idea is, when you have an idea, oh, I have an idea. And you put that now in a relationship or when you're dealing with somebody or when two people come together just to have intercourse, it really at least to me, it implies that we should be concentrating more on the people we want 
to create with. That means that more times than not, the way we have this uh, uh, sexual intercourse in this country, that we're going to produce ideas that are not conducive to where we want to be or where you perceive your family to be in the future, meaning that you're having children or many people are having children, you know, under the guise of relieving stress, having fun. I just want to get minds off. I'm doing me. And then all of these children today are being produced that way. Now, I want you to think about that. Children being produced to relieve stress or conceived, let me say not produced, but conceived out of stress related issues, out of, oh, I just want to get my rocks off. And there is no thought behind creating greatness. And I I am of the mindset is if you don't know that you can create greatness, then you're just going to do what the society is currently doing. And society actually kind of um, promotes this through media. You know what I mean? Uh, online, this is all that we see. No one is telling you to promote greatness. Well, Eh, well, what people tell you is, uh, well, watch me do it. I'm doing it big and all that stuff. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the idea, like putting down an idea in your mind. Hey, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to do it. And then finding somebody of the opposite sex to help you or that coincides with your idea of whatever you're trying to create in regards to greatness you know what I mean? And that's understanding. That's understanding who you are. I guess the conception part starts with who you are. What your family lineage is. You know, get as much information about what your family is about. So this way you, the individual, can actually um, understand the limitations in which your family's faced. And the things that your family has excelled at over the last few generations. Because all of these things are important to each and every person. Like, for example, if I wanted to have a child, it's important. it would be important for me to understand my shortcomings, my parents' shortcomings, my grandparents' shortcomings, if, well, and, and so forth. As much d- data as you can get from both sides of your family, uh, and I'm talking about mother and father, the better. And then when you run into, if I was to run into a female now um, that I'm serious about, then it would be important for me to understand as much about her as possible before getting together and conceiving a child. You know what I mean? You have to have a business plan. That's why I'm a huge proponent of looking at uh, relationships as a business. It has to be more businesslike. The random, let me just get it in kind of mentality um, produces children that are not so uh, pro- productive in society. So we have to kind of pay more attention to the idea of producing greatness. Now, this is only for those people who are truly about, oh, they want to reproduce and these people who talk about a legacy. Because most people I talk to about children always tell me, well, they had children for a legacy. So when I ask them what their legacy is, because most of these people, they have no legacy. They're just here existing. And maybe their maybe their legacy is just to exist, not to participate in the development of their children. Uh, Oftentimes, I wonder whether or not. Many of these parents that I've come across um, even care about their children. Uh, it, it appears to me that many of them use their children as leverage against the other parent in order to do more harm. But 
I find it very important for me to discuss the art and science of conception. And, and it's thought, the concept, the idea starts with the individual, the, the soon-to-be mother and the soon-to-be father. And once those two ideas, whatever the mother's idea of of uh, her future is and whatever the father I, idea of his future is, when they come together, they're creating ideas. And to really get down to, to, nu- to the nuance of this science, what I'm truly talking about is when you conceive a child, Whatever's going on in your life at that particular point in time, you, the individual, well, that, well, let me say that, that individual's, uh, uh, stresses will play a heavy influence on the kind of child that they are relating, the type of foods you're eating, the, the things that you're, you're dealing with in your life, those stressors, uh, because they will manipulate what is known as your epigenome that's the uh, or it's a science known as epigenetics where environmental conditions the external as well as the internal environment environmental conditions uh, are able to manipulate dna and shut off certain aspects of d of your dna that makes you who you are now once you understand that that little tidbit then it at least to me it shows the importance of being able to um, pay attention to your environment pay attention how you eat and pay attention how you're treating yourself before you actually try to go ahead and conceive a child and I am of the, the mindset now understanding this that people can create what they want but that will take cooperation on both parents' part. And without that cooperation, like we see today, like I've seen for 14 years, where one parent may want a child and the other one doesn't. And people must understand, environment will dictate what you create. So all of these things are important for people to understand. Environment, yourself, and the plan that you have to producing another entity. And we have been taught to just treat sex as a pastime. And quite honestly, it's no different than what was done, uh, what was promoted during the the slave era in order to... Um, uh, create human livestock as a business plan or for that matter breeding animals so again I wanted to do this video just to bring the people's attention that we should concentrate if you're deciding on having children on number one really being honest with yourself on who you are Number two, pay attention to your environmental conditions because they will play a tremendous part in how how and what you, not how, but what you create in terms of entities. You get this wrong, you put your child behind the eight ball tremendously. You know what I mean? You put your child behind the eight ball. It's not reproduction and understanding what reproduction is not what we've been told. This is why we see the amount of children in these uh, types of scenarios that we see them in today. There are not a lot of success stories in comparison, at least those not marketed on TV or on the Internet are shown as much. Each child is full of potential, but their potential will be predicated on what their parents uh, have, uh, how their parents have planned for their arrival. And in most instances, children are not planned. So we put our children behind the eight ball. 
So again, I, I don't want to go too long. I'm already about 15 minutes into this uh, uh, rant on conception uh, and bringing more attention to the art of conception. And I'll probably touch this topic a few more times on this channel. I'd appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and comment uh, on what you've heard here today. Make sure you hit the bell icon button, hit the subscribe button, and then uh, once you hit that button, you will be uh, prompted with the little bell icon button. Just click that to get any uh, uh, updates on the newest and latest videos that I have on this channel. My name is Garth Harvey. I am a DNA relationship testing uh, specialist, have been for the last 14 years, and have had an opportunity to see what relationships look like up close and personal, something different than most people have ever had the opportunity to see when you're doing paternity testing, maternity testing, not only here in the United States, but for families worldwide. So I have a unique perspective on what relationships are and are currently dealing with outside of the sound bites that we hear on YouTube from one or two people. I'm not just talking about one or two people. I'm talking about thousands of people. People will be surprised at what they would hear from people doing DNA relationship uh, testing and being a part of this particular process. But nonetheless, I want to thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be able to uh, express these kinds of ideas to you and until next time please take care in closing i would like to thank you for watching this video i hope you found the information useful also do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel to get the latest information on all things paternity paternity testing and relationship related issues if you would like to expedite your learning about the paternity testing process, please click the link in the description below to check out my new book on Amazon called Are You or Are You Not the Father? The complete how to question and answer guide to the paternity testing process. Once again, thank you for watching and take care.